because I believe you you were not always like this so cool and yeah. oh for sure when did you you like were you born Christian yes my my grandfather actually was a church leader of sorts like he he had his church he had a church a church organization like if you were to so take ayahuasca now and you wake up you're dri- you're, you're a driver mm-hmm. somewhere in Bangladesh and the British are invading you and you have a family of five and you are just this angry man and you are there for five hours. What How- do you mean, dog? What do you mean? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Peace to the gods. Peace to the goddesses. Oh my word, we are back, man. Welcome back to the Highest Frequency Podcast. But I'm still the same guy. Kamala Mubuta La Mabuta, a.k.a. Thomas Aquinas. But in general, Slaggington, are you good, bro? Yeah, I'm good, bro. What's up, man? I'm nice. It's been a minute since we've been out here. A long one. How was it? Like, was it a holiday? Like, what should we call it? A recess? It was a hiatus. A hiatus, a <laughs> <Yeah>. break. <laughs> a chilled hiatus but somewhere. I'm, but back. I feel good now, Mfana. We are back. We look good. And you know, the first episode is amazing. I feel like it's the first episode because I we think are we back should, with a banger. We should consider this as season two. Season two, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. the highest rankings. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope Nani Nikren, before we even start this conversation, Please subscribe to our channel. Nyabona, we are approaching 1.5 subscribers. Thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed to this channel. It's support you and say, Bon. For those that like just watching and not subscribing, please subscribe. It helps us a lot. Talk yeah. about the TikTok numbers as well. Yo, TikTok family, we're big on TikTok, dog. Yeah. yeah tough. Fucked up. Like we are on like over 100,000 views. Yeah. Damn. It's crazy out there. Like 5,000 followers. Yeah, I'm wow. watching 5K8, dog. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. The love is just amazing. Thank you so much to all the TikTok gods out there and the goddesses and Bona. Thank you so much for the support. And talking about my gods and my goddesses today in Petty God. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I want guys. I want us to, to dive deeper, you know. You know me, I'm all about enlightening and awakening a band. You know, and today's episode is also about that. And Peter, someone who I came across online and I was like, damn, this guy's doing amazing things. Yeah. I wish to blom with this guy yeah. and have this conversation. And Jenga Makots, you know, we always make things happen. He runs a page called Psychedelic Medicine, right? Yes. And he's a spiritual healer. Yeah. He's a herbalist. Oh, so many names. <laughs> Jesus, you can call me a shaman or you can even, whatever, whatever feels right for you. <laughs> Welcome, Loazi. Give me the pop, 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 pop. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> you good, bro? We're here, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for pulling up. We're here. Finally. Yo, where do we start? Where do we start? You know, I'm, I'm a student about mm-hmm. life. Yeah. Uh, it's in Ale Ngoguti. Uh, I've been searching for answers. Mina is Ubuto. And I feel like we live in a world where there are a few people that really have the answers. Yeah. I don't know if it's a few people or there are a lot of people with the answers, but they are not really outspoken like yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But today I just want to know about what you know. That's a very loaded question. Mm. Where do I start? You know, first of all, many people now mm. will try to sort of try and understand the mystery of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah? And I went through that cycle too. I was actually talking yesterday to the the retreat participants that the first time I met people, the spiritual guru people, was back in 2007, oh, yeah. where there was Osho, there's Eckhart Tolle, and all these different people. Right. So what was happening with me then, right, just like most people, is that I was trying to solve the mystery of existence. I was trying to pack it up in a way that could help me understand myself. But what was really happening in a more in the subconscious mind, right, was me trying to solve my childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. But I thought that to solve a childhood trauma, I need to look at the mystery outside of me. Mm. So that's what many people do. Like, um, 
that's why I'm saying it's a loaded question because I've met so many people and there's this online cult and all these things where mm. they... So like the first time, let me just say this, like yeah. the first time when I, you, you actually wanted to... Like what triggered that whole journey, like your journey? My journey... Oh, my journey is wrapped in a in a huge shadow. Because I believe you you were not always like this or cool like it. Oh, for sure. When did you you like were you born Christian? Yes. My my grandfather actually was a church leader of sorts. Like he he had his church. He had a church, a church organization that he had mm. within the Methodist church. He has his own organization. And then when did you start deciding to like take your own lane, like? Mm. And what pushed you to take that lane? My whole thing with church that got me out of church, right? It wasn't like uh, the, the the typical thing people say, hey, what inspired you? You know, like <laughs> I was never inspired. Like oh. it wasn't like I woke up one day, I'm like, oh, Kimba, yo, I want to be a healer. <laughs> That's That was never what I, what I wanted, mm. right? Mm. But within the church context, within Christianity, what I felt like, I felt like it didn't align with me mm -hmm. and it couldn't solve my issues, right? So I still remember that child, the young boy who's me, who was struggling with a lot of childhood trauma and he would try and reach out to a man who was born by a man to save him. And I remember that I, I, I couldn't really, I didn't feel the connection. I felt like Whenever I'm reaching out to that space, I'm reaching to a space that has a judge that judges me if I'm going to do bad or good. Mm. And it's not really saving me from all the troubles that I was experiencing as a kid. Mm. So I think my disconnection with Christianity was out of I'm trying to find something else and I was desperate for it. Right. This other thing. And that's what led me, as I said, to things like uh, our spiritual people, spiritual. But sooner or later, I was tired of that stuff as well. Because mm. it was offering me too much of an escape. Like, if I say to you, Boots, mm. I say just, um, since you're going, if you're going through problems, just calm down and just know that you're the God. You're in charge of the universe. The cosmic understanding mm. is within you. Mm. You are ascended, right? Mm. If I say that, if I say that to you, what about all the things that have happened to you? Are mm. you going to ignore them? And I felt like that was what was happening to me. I, I sort of like push things away thinking that if I just see myself as this ascended master of sorts just like I'm getting in the readings of all these guys or Deepak Chopra and all these I thought that it will help me escape but still that didn't help me escape I couldn't get away get out of it yeah dog you know you sound like you are so many things mm -hmm. like how would you define yourself right now like me now I am Bhutto yeah. I am spiritual. I believe that I am the master of my own reality. Mm -hmm. I'm busy trying to learn how to control my thoughts and remove all the negativity in my mm -hmm. head. I am not yet at any level where I can say I've, I'm a master at this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, but I know you do sound healing. Like, you do a lot of things. You yeah. Like, you take psychedelics. Like, people actually reach out to you yeah. for so many things. Yeah. For Are you healing. like how would you define yourself right now? I see myself as a conduit, as a medium. Like I, I within the plant medicine space, whether you talk about ayahuasca, wachuma and all these other plants, I see myself as the medium of the plants. Like I'm not the one who's healing. It's the plants that have designed the whole setup and called everyone into that space. Mm. And I'm just the medium who can mm. channel that power in the right way. That's Guys, how we're learning about psychedelics, <laughs> by the way, t today. Sluggish one. Yeah. yeah. What do you know about psychedelics, Doc? Today I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> about ayahuasca, you're I like, know what's nothing. that? <laughs> I've got the guy to teach me everything. Ah, he's here to teach us, everything. Yeah. He said it's the shaman, yeah. right? Which is, uh, translation, the healer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's here to heal us, heal the viewers, teach us everything that we need to know. Right? Mm. Yeah. So I want to know everything when it comes to ayahuasca, shrooms, yeah. DMT. Yeah. So let's just get to it. Ne? Let's yeah. just start by you teaching a great one like myself. Mm. Why is there such a thing called psychedelics and why is it f not famous out there? 
Yeah. Why is yeah. it like it's done by a certain group yeah. of people? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, yo, man, I'm about to hijack this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free, my man. I'm about to hijack this thing. <laughs> but anyway, this really, really excites me. Mm. Um, plant medicine, right? You can see, you can hear the word now, psychedelics, medicine. And, you know, this. it sounds like this whole fufu thing. You know, there's this new age thing that's going on. People are like, yeah, I took that thing. And this is what I saw. I saw an angel. And angel said to me that he's guiding me all the time. So you have all those things that are happening now as if it's something new. But it's nothing new. It's nothing new. It's been here for thousands and thousands of years. Mm. Right? So I'm going to be doing an Egyptian ayahuasca event in Jan. It's been around thousands in Egypt, everywhere, across the world. Right? So plant medicine, I don't know. Like it's the passageway to spirit, if you want to call it that. Right? Mm. There's so many other arguments where they say that, uh, no, when you take this plant, you're probably hallucinating. But those arguments are not enough because they can't explain some of the things. Like if you were to take ayahuasca now and you wake up, you're, dri- you're, you're a driver mm-hmm. somewhere in Bangladesh and the British are invading you and you have a family of five and you are just this angry man and you are there for five hours. What How- do you mean, dog? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> this guy... <laughs> Imagine that, right? So how can you hallucinate someone's entire life? Mm. It's impossible, Mm. right? You have people who experience a past life, if you want to call it that, Mm. you know, because I like time is time is not linear, it's happening right now. But you can experience something where you are in an oil rig. Mm. I mean, you're working in an oil rig, you're like busy working, 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 and you've never been inside an oil rig. Like that's happening, like are you are you awake, wide awake? Are you sleeping? Depending on how deep the medicine is. Mm-hmm. If the medicine is really deep, mm-hmm. even when you open your eyes, you're still there. Mm. Right? If the medicine is sort of gentle, then you can open your eyes and you can still get a sense of, of, of your surroundings. And But if it's really deep, you can literally like feel like when you're doing this, like you're you're, <laughs> you're, mm. you, you are actually dissolving into yourself. You're like... Doo, 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 doo. Oh, you know? Yeah. So... Plant medicine has been around for a long time and it's been used to heal people. We look at the, the school of psychology and modernity, right? Mm-hmm. Like in the modern way, where we are saying that if, if you are depressed, mm-hmm. we are saying that there's an imbalance in your brain. And for us to help you, we need to give you this pill so that your brain gets back to balance. Psychedelics don't say that. Mm. They say that if you are depressed, right, that's a symptom of something deeper. So it's not your brain that's imbalanced. Because if you are happy and joyous, we're not going to say, hey, Ubuntu needs to come back to balance. It's so happy. Mm. Right? Mm. So now, when you look at the psychedelic sphere, it's going to treat that depression as a symptom. Mm. We look at insomnia, it's a symptom. We look at bipolar, it's treated as a symptom. Mm. Multiple personality, symptom. Right? And then what it does is that it opens the door and tries to find out why is, the, why is the symptom there? And then we learn, right, that the symptom is there to protect you. Mm. So let me make an example. Whenever I get a call, someone says, I tried killing myself last week. Or someone says, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kill my children, myself, right? Mm-hmm. And I say, why? And then they like, life has no meaning. Then I say, of course, it has no meaning for you. Mm-hmm. Right? And they like, what do you mean? They're like, oh, I've been in therapy for 15 years and I want to die. And I'm like, of course you want to die. Like, what else would you be feeling? So take a child. When, when you want to die, that symptom is called escape. You're just trying to escape something. You don't really want to die. You just want to get out of here into somewhere that you fantasize might be better or into nothingness. But your whole, per- your whole thing is to get out of here. So that's an escape. You're trying to escape to somewhere. So when we go deeper within the programs, we're going to ask you as to, when did this escape start? When did this meaning that says to you, life has no meaning start? Then we learn that maybe at six years old, you were molested. And within the molestation, when that was happening, you said to yourself, since I'm being molested, life has no meaning. Because if you had given that molestation meaning, you would have been crazy. Then when you talk to that coping mechanism called suicide, escape, depression, 
and you ask it, so what is it? What is its purpose on you? And it's like we're here to save him, because if he was to give life meaning at that juncture at six years old, he would have died by now. He'd have gone crazy. So we're trying to maintain him. Now the issue is that with that energy, it lives with you until you are in your fifties or wherever, and now you are going to moments that trigger you. Then you go back to the thought of I want to escape, I want to get out. So psychedelics are there to help you go through all the traumas that you've been. Yeah, and and through them going through the trauma, through them going through a disconnection. And by the way, when I say trauma, you know people would be like, "Hey, I'm depressed, but you know I'm not traumatized, man." Because mm. they still think that trauma is something that happens to you, mm. right? But trauma is not really something that happens to you. Those are nice talk. These are nice about trauma is something that happens to you outside of its support structure. Okay. If you grow up in a chaotic environment mm -hmm. and then you have a support structure to help you regulate yourself and see like, how are you feeling? All right. Or if you get bullied at school, that support structure is like, ah, we need to go to that school, talk to the uh, thing, the, the, the headmaster, talk to the parents, do this and ask you, are you okay? Do you feel safe? Should you change school? Mm -hmm. Now you are not traumatized by that event, right? Mm -hmm. So trauma could be anything really if there's no support structure that brings you back to your innocence as a child then we call it trauma so psychedelics coming back to <laughs> I'm a, i was about to ask you because I mean, I, I smoke weed you know yeah i'm about to light up the spliff what the is the spliff now <laughs> like sometimes it helps me to ease my thoughts it helps yeah, me yeah, to yeah. calm down is weed a part of the psychedelics family or it's a totally different thing yeah so weed is depending on how it's used because when you're explaining it yeah sounds like weed should also be part of that family yeah it is it is it's a medicine right? it's a medicine in and of itself in fact the bushman uses it as a psychedelic oh yeah like they boil it and do that and and before they use the weed the shaman the the, the bushman shaman mm -hmm. has to go through certain rites of passages just like the mushrooms it's rites of passages but in our when you say passages you mean dimensions no a rites of passages in you need to be initiated. Okay. So you need to, to know, yeah, and understand, and understand the plants okay, and I live with the plants and ingest. So did the you go through that process? Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, man. I was paid to talk to you psychedelic, Oh man. Me in 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 layman terms, Loazine. To because you know everyone talks about I was I was I was yeah, but. It's not like weed, which is like, ah, you smoke weed. When it comes to ayahuasca, what do you do? Do you smoke it? Do you drink it? Do you eat it? Because the general consensus is it's a bunch of people uh, with the shaman. Um, get all, uh, get well and your next thing, someone is in a trance. Yeah. Someone is his mind is somewhere go pee go pee after forty eight hours. Yeah, seeing the past or the future. But what happens? How do you take it? How do you consume it? I think that's my question. Yeah, it's just the cooked plants. You know, you cook it, you prepare it, and then it's taken like tea. Ah. Oh. However, it doesn't taste like tea. It's it's got like such some some a bitter taste. You yeah, know, like a really strong bits I, it feels like you're actually like eating a tree bark when you're <laughs> when you're when you're drinking the medicine then once you've you've drank it then it, it takes depending on a person it takes like up to an hour to come into play in your in your system then that's where you slowly go through different stages of the journey right and the stages would um the stages sometimes it starts with trying to like dissolve your ego, meaning it's trying to make you let go of life. Sometimes you can feel like in the first few hours you can feel like you're dying. I knew that's exactly what I needed, dog, because I'm trying to kill the ego. <laughs> you trying I'm to done with this Buto who thinks is all that, you know, who wants to <laughs> convince people that Yena is good at everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanna chill. And yeah. Do me. And just be okay with self. Yeah. That's that's yeah. where I'm at. Yeah. So psychedelics are the answer, right? Yes and no. I mean, when you're killing the ego, ego is invalidation. Like, if you're getting validation from other people, there are other ways to go around it, but psychedelics are the quicker way. Mm. It's not like... 
I don't know, man. It's not like how people I see now online, people going crazy. They're like, I'm living in a different universe now that I took ayahuasca and all of that. <laughs> you know, I, I, don't, I don't think it's like that. However, I do know, and I know this for sure, that it's the best way to go around with helping you, with dissolving your sense of being invalid, which is just what your ego is. So it, it is the best way. It's quicker. You know, I meet people who've been in therapy for 15 years, 20 years, and then they like, you help me in three weeks. It's something that I've been struggling for 20 years. With. I meet people who say, I went to therapy because I was depressed and suicidal six years ago. And I find them six years later, and they like, still depression, so, so suicidal. Mm -hmm. And then you take them through the medicine journey, mm -hmm. and the psychedelic medicine journey helps them heal that. And it goes a little deeper. I told you I'm hijacking this podcast. It goes a little deeper, right? So not only does it only go to your pains, like your lifetime type of pains, it also goes to your ancestral pains as well. What do you mean? When I say that, I mean... Like, it was... In your... I won't ask you what those. Yeah, right. Yeah, it goes and guess guess you know. Guess <laughs> it. It goes. I'm at those. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it's so, funny. so so I would like call one of my ancestors to come alive. No, no, no. You don't call them. Mm. In the journey, you might be taking the medicine. and You're like, I'm very struggling with my ego. The medicine shows you, and it's like you're not the only one who's struggling. Let's show you where this thing started. Then you're like. 1,000 years ago, and here you are running in the bushes, and you're like, who is this that I'm running with? They're like, that's your father. Sounds exciting. Right? Something. And you're like, why? And you're like, dad, dad, help me, help me. And your father is, is, is ignoring you. So now that's where your ego started, where you're like, I need to be valid. I need to prove to my father. But now you're proving it to the world because it's in this lifetime. So that ancestral trauma, right? Then you see it's how it got passed along. And pass the law, and pass the So you won't be like, hey, I hate my dad, cause. Is it the same thing, Yoguti? Uh, if Guinea, you guys have maybe are known for a certain thing, mm. and but in is sluggish, but Yoguti, hey, labo kubo angiti la. Kuba. Eh, but on Kuba. Yeah. Like, like, ufuzo umkulwa. Yeah, ufuzo. Yeah, ufuzo. Yes, that's what it is, you know, and it's. It's, it's, it doesn't only end there. Like, you can look at it in that dimension. Because it's just energy that keeps getting passed along and passed you. along. So psychedelics help, helps you to, like, remove all that. To, to work on that. Yeah. And work on it at a very deep level. Very deep and are fundamental you, you, like, level. Like, like, it sounds like it's too much work, bro. Is it fun? It's not. Unless you're sounds doing the hectic, light stuff. Man. Like, yeah. you can do... I don't do light stuff because I don't feel like I'm called for that. You know, but the, what are the light stuff? You know, the light stuff yeah. is is when uh, you go to a psychedelic events. Because I'm gonna be one of your students now. Yeah, so obviously yeah. you gotta start slow with I'm me. Getting you is slow that, yeah, in the, the door. Stuff? No, 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 I don't do light stuff. <laughs> this guy doesn't <laughs> do... I need to vet you first. He doesn't do micro-dosing, <laughs> man. Vet That's what he actually is saying. I need to vet you first, uh, right? Like, to vet mm -hmm. if the my hand... Well, I think I have a very strong hand when it comes to the medicine, if it's right for you, right? Because mm -hmm. it will take you and it will it'll mess you up. I don't know if I go, can go French here. It will F you up, uh, right? No, on, it can fuck you up crazy. <laughs> yeah, it will fuck you up, right? Because, you know, when people talk about um, doing shrooms or doing ayahuasca or doing DMT, they make it sound as if it's a fun thing. Yeah, that's that's a soft approach. That's a soft approach. Yeah, that's a soft approach. Like, if you're going to do the more commercial, more softish approach, where it's like, gently, I'm sort of dreaming, and I saw myself as an angel walking. <laughs> that can be done, right? Oh, but that can be done. Yeah, and then that can be the done heavy with, stuff the, with, as the, well. with how you cook to the medicine, number one, and with the dosage of the medicine. That's the second one. That's amazing. That's amazing. Have you taken shrooms, Doc? Never take. I'm afraid. I'm also afraid. Yeah. <laughs> I've been afraid. Because, like, with, with people's experiences, like, no, you have to take shrooms around people. 
uh, yeah. something might happen. Mina, 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 Mina like, what's going about, to hey, happen? You should take shrooms when you're in the nature, like when you're in the in nature, in yeah. nature. Make sure that there's a lot of trees around you. Like why? Like why, dog? <laughs> Uh, you're already scaring me. <laughs> scaring Are you scaring like, me? Why do I need trees? Thought, like, <laughs> can I just do, can it, I just do it in my yard and just relax? <laughs> yeah, tell us dog, about that, like about the mushrooms and, and those things. Yeah, so the the medicine really deserves respect, right? So, because I'm coming from an indige- indigenous practitioner perspective, I'm coming from the school of thoughts of, of hyper respect of the medicine. Like, you can really harm yourself with this because it opens you up so deeply that you can... You know, if you wanna, it can it can really attract a lot of bad stuff as well, because it really opens you up. And there are so many roaming things that are actually looking for someone who's that open, who they can live through, right? So, spirits. yeah, so spirits, right? Yeah, you can call it spirits or ghosts or whatever. Like, is it spirits <laughs> that couldn't find the way through after they died? Like, yeah, it's those energies and. Um, now we're talking witchcraft. <laughs> but but yeah, it's those energies and some energies that are just sort of roaming that are coming from some lineage mm. that were never were, were never able to be spread in that lineage, so they sort of roaming, but it mm. goes so deep in that world. Yes, yes, but I'm a ghost. Uh, ipog. Ipog, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so unlock you know, if mm. have a, you take so I've more heard than... I've had the call talking about respecting the medicine. I've got yeah. I've had the call. I think I've had two or three three this year. Last year it was maybe six where someone would be going through total psychosis after a mushroom ceremony or trip that they were doing with friends right and then the parents would call me through some shaman who's in the PE or whatever and they'd be like hey my child is not coming back it's been three days I had a call earlier this year of some lady who was paranoid and in panic and she couldn't go to work for two weeks and and whenever I, I just laughed at her and she's like oh my god you're gonna kill me so she's <laughs> thinking that I'm some evil creature that is laughing at her for the phone like Whoa. and i can't wait to get that deep what do you so, mean you can't wait to, to, sounds be, exciting psychosis man. sounds exciting psychosis, losing your mind is it like she's not there at that moment she, she, she can't she come still back. Needs to she come can back see to the, she yeah. can see her voice you know like invasive thoughts man mm. like something that says that like, push the dog into the pool mm. is that invasive thoughts you don't listen to it now imagine that invasive thought if it was louder than your conscious thoughts like that's bizarre because mm. now you are sitting in the couch and you're like on the couch and you're like, i want to push this dog right <laughs> so that's not exciting because no, because then I, now you're in danger of being labeled as very like, like crazy, a person. crazy person and that's the issue with playing with the medicine in the in in america now they're starting something called psychedelic harm reduction and i love i really love the movement because mm-hmm. they've been playing with the medicine trying to get it into modernity and they are realizing a lot of scary things mm. when they are doing the therapists there, the scientists, realizing a lot of scary things that they sometimes dream things as if they are in the person's mindset when they go home. They're realizing that they have some telepathic communication with the person who's actually sleeping there, who's being ingested with your, your DMT, etc. They realize those telepathic elements. Yeah. So now they're slowly starting to call back the indigenous people and are like okay we need to bring these people in because they sort of understand this deeper mm. but before that they treated it as just like a pill just like how mushrooms mm. are being treated mm. like here in SA, right? so are you saying behind closed doors like the world governments they actually call the indigenous people whenever yeah, they're on, needed on the on the not really behind closed doors because it's like a movie i never see them speaking highly of they they didn't before it's slowly changing yeah because right? the gut band because when you know when, when when you when you research about psych psychedelics mm-hmm. it's something that doctors back in the 60s or 50s used to do on patients oh it's not for the and so for like the, the normal beings yes out there. but it got to a point where they were like you know what this it type of is. medication yeah. should not be done on yeah. schizophrenic patients yeah. and so on. Mm-hmm. because as he says you could go on a trip and not come back mm-hmm. and so on. experience psychosis for like yeah. a yeah. week yeah. Yeah. yeah and so which is now really really dangerous and you cannot come back forever sometimes uh, like that yeah like, schizophrenia forever yeah, like so that's the scary part about these type of drugs yeah like, yeah yeah and 
the, the, the reason for the ban though, just to make this clear, wasn't, it was back in the 50s, 60s where they were starting to see that it's actually affecting the pharma, pharmaceutical companies. Because now if you were taking antidepressants for 20 years, but then suddenly you're going into these ayahuasca things, mm. uh, and suddenly you don't need the antidepressants. Obvious. Then you, you, you're messing with like the livelihood of the corporation. You're messing with big money. Taking big away money. their coins. <laughs> you're worse, it was waking people up back then where they were, it was still legal in America. Mm. Where they were, they, and, and America and, and Britain. Where they, people are waking up and they're like, we don't want to fight the war now. Mm. All we want is peace. And everyone is singing, peace, peace, peace. Yeah, they're let's hippies. Unite, let's sleep together. <laughs> then they're categorized as hippies because they're looking for peace, right? Amazing. Be, be calling, being called a certain segment. And now this was slowly healing people and bringing them back to their center. And that was dangerous for corporations. So they had to go on a really serious attack that this is dangerous, this is dangerous, this will mm. kill you right. but in all honesty uh what does it really do to you does it help you a lot it does under the right guidance and care mm. it does 100 percent. like like um, we need it as normal beings out there people I, need to fall in love I with this thing i believe that you know i think that people should go on a journey at least once a year obviously the you can't really overtake the medicine because you can take it so many times and it will be like to you don't come back Okay. That's how powerful it is. It can actually tell you, don't come back, otherwise you won't come back. So it actually stops you from coming back. I know, so like you told us, Peter, you go back and like, I'm cool. I'm cool, God. I'm cool. Yeah, but I'm not now. Next month, we should start. Next month is December, ne? I'm an outsider. I'm an outsider, but I won't lie. Like I'm, 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 I'm still afraid. I wanted to know, Mina Oguti, um, with Loazi, what's your favorite psychedelic drug to 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 consume? Because uh, as you say, it's not something that you you are supposed to use on a continuous basis. It's not like weed. I yeah, know they always can't. say. You can't be addicted to shrooms. Mm. Like, you can't be addicted to shrooms. Like, yeah, you can't be addicted to shrooms. You can take them once and enjoy the trip. And then maybe after some time. But like, for someone who's never done it, uh. they're like, how do you get to fully enjoy it if Mangabe, it's not something that you do on a continuous basis? Yeah, so psychedelics are not designed for you to escape reality. They designed for you to embrace reality. So most of the most, you know, the, our culture is based on escape. Like a lot of people love this thing of I want to get away from it. So you know, sometimes I like leaving shrooms out of the conversation, mm -hmm. and the reason for that is because there are three types of shrooms: there's the organic, the one from the ground, then there's the cloned ones, then there's the ones in the middle that are sort of cloned and organic. Mm -hmm. So I like leaving them out because I feel like the spirit of the plant has been sort of played with with a lot, mm -hmm. and I'm yet to find someone who's saying I'm a shroomer. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been shrooming for three years. I'm yet to find them. Like saying that I'm I'm happy and peaceful and joyful. Okay. I'm yet to find. Like if you ask your friends who who do shrooms every once in a while in a weekend, if you look at them, are they happy? Are they joyful? Are they centered being? Or are they just trying to run away from something? So there's there's that element of respecting the medicine as well. Because if you if you sort of play with it, mm. it can it does play with you. Because you're opening so many doors. I mean, you you wake up, you're a mermaid somewhere. Right, mm -hmm. and now you what door are you opening? Do you know how to close it? So, what's your take on the GMOs as a whole? Oh, GMOs, man, mm. uh, I think that's anti human. <laughs> I don't think that's pro humanity, I think that's pro profit. Mm. Right, that's what it is. And There's this type of weed that people like, dog. No, I don't like it because it's GMO. What is it called? Indo, yeah, yeah Indo. That's a GMO, right? Yeah, oh. I would think. It's grown by the light, not the sun. Yeah, 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 yeah. How did I get the energy, the right energy? It's not like the light mm. has that energy. Mm. You, 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 you feel me? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like indoor though. Yeah. I always tell my guys. Yeah, no, you always I mean, do that. Can I get organic? Can meat? I get organic? Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's the same in the psychedelic space. Like I've, I've seen when I get a plant, 
that someone found in the bushes like mm. not a plant not a plant that someone just planted like a plant that was in somewhere in the bushes and they like hey it was mm. some good stuff here this tree has been around it looks very old nice it will mess you up <laughs> like it will mess you up you'll come out of there and you'll be like i don't mm. know who i am mm. and i'm like it's time to create a new you but you come out there literally feeling that way because mm. of how powerful it is when something is all natural and not nurtured with chemicals and working on the soil and mm. doing all of this. Mm. Mm. You know, because when you say that, I remember growing up and yeah, I used to travel with my granddad in the mountains, like thing on mushrooms, because you know, like like people eat shrooms. Yeah. So like, yes. Not as a drug vibe but as a no like yes you are there but then there would be shrooms that were like uh-uh you don't touch these you don't touch these and yeah. like you'd ask yourself what you mean why yeah what's what's the vibe with them young toy they used to say they were poisonous yeah they used to say they were poisonous yeah, yeah is, is there such a thing yeah there are many poisonous shrooms like there's uh-huh. a family that died like first on in zimbabwe they, they had those poisonous shrooms on their food they are very poisonous. <laughs> really, it's very poisonous. So how do you like? How do you tell like if this one is poisonous? Oh God, man! Oh man! It's the color. It's the shape. Um, yeah, I think it's the color and the shape. It's all different. You know, there are so many different types of shrooms. I don't even know how many shrooms are there. Like there are so many, and the 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 crazy part is that shrooms take an initiation for you to use them. So in the past, like indigenous cultures, our indigenous culture, mm-hmm. right, as well, they had a rite of passage, like they were to go through initiations for the shrooms. Because mm-hmm. you have to be able to sit with the medicine and even the darkness that the medicine gives gives out, because darkness is an illusion. But it, they, it has to, you have to be one. It's almost like... Like supernatural powers that you take from the shroom. No, man. I mean, you know, like, it has any kobong. Yeah. There's a certain medicine that you take, depending on what type of kobongo you take, you, you're doing. You take that medicine for a couple of months until you become one with it. So mm. the spirit of the medicine, mm. right, actually merges with you. I get you. So what, once the, the spirit, when the spirit is merged with you, then it's easier for you to understand and move the energy and all of that during ceremony. You guys are one. So the indigenous cultures, right, even the Bushmen, right, they still have a rite of passage in Mexico, three years. Right? You are going through a rite of passage for the shrooms. Now comes a guy with a suitcase from, from the West and he was like, Ah man, we don't need all of these things. Let me just take this. Mm. And skips that those type of processes. Then it becomes a hit and miss. One person goes crazy. Mm. Another, I get you. you. Know, like, well, so I one get person you. gets healed, another, you know, because now the, the process of. Wasn't followed. Yeah, of, of, of the spirit of the plant. Mm. So you, you guys do not. You don't have the full knowledge. You don't have the full knowledge. Because in skip and I'll be like, yeah. let's just jump into you it. Fi- you find someone who is working with the medicine, but is deadly afraid of the medicine. Mm. Right? Of course, you, you, you'll never be used to the medicine. It's, so, it's such an advanced technology. But, but there are some people hey. who are literally like, I, I don't I, The psychedelic all, medicine sounds hectic. Dot. Hey, hey, hey. hey. I lost yeah, yeah, yeah. But me, I, I want us to go go back to to the start with what Lazi said at first when he when he spoke about his um upbringing in terms of Christianity. By the way, first question, Lazi, are you still a Christian? No. Okay, <laughs> you you're no longer a Christian. But, I don't judge. but you don't judge because no. there's a time where you said um you realized that Christianity wasn't serving you, yes. and as a black person in Africa. Now, this is a broad question in general to all African people because, you know, there's an internal battle when it comes to Christianity on black people and them abandoning um, their spirituality and told, uh, yeah. how they actually were. How do you feel about that? Um, do you feel as if black people are lost because there's black people who still practice Amazhozi, and also Christianity. Yeah. And there's black people who don't practice Amazhozi at all, focus on Christianity. But it's like, um, who are you praising? Because 
your forefathers were not praising yes. the person or the higher power that you are praising today. Mm. Uh, you, you get my question? I, I, I get you. I wouldn't call it being lost necessarily. I don't, I don't feel, I don't see, I don't see every human experience. Like if you look at the structure of humanity, right? We, we've been going through different phases. We went into the indigenous phase where we are just living and we are more animistic in nature. We're praising the, the spirits of the plants and doing this and doing this. And then we moved and then we moved to maybe the ancestral domain where we're like, our forefathers will talk to us, right? And we have a ritual when they pass on that makes sure that they arrive safely and all of that. And then we moved, right, as, as humanity, as a species. And then we're like, okay, there's this one person who's going to save us, right? And it's called Jesus or, 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 or Allah and then, you know, Muhammad and stuff. And then now, I think when we talk about identity, if we are talking about identity, we need to be aware of the human experience because life is happening and has been happening and it will be happening so when the minus of what christianity is to an african child is how it came through where it came with people who are invading right where it came with the invaders where it came with col colonialists where it came with imperialism right now as you speak right now as you speak in the Amazon, there's a missionary church, right, that's being built right now. And because now the corporation, they wanna, they found oil there that's worth trillions. Yeah. So the church. I say they're still colonizing us. Right now, it's, it's, of course, man. Right now, it's, 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 right now it's, it's, African style, where they right send all those missionaries. So these missionaries. So you thought colonization come ended? Movies, right. They come there with all these problems that they took from our. And then when they are there, they like, for you to get the medicine, where we gonna vaccinate you and stuff, you need to be Christian, mm. right? Mm. So you're finding all these tribe people who are now become, being called different names, like your Santiago, your what, because it's Spanish, that's like. So the conquest is still continuing. Yeah. Now, where I would agree that it, like as, a, as an African child, that's what they did to us. Yeah, that's what happened. We were forced into Christianity. Christianity. Yeah, it's not like we were like, no, 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 we were dragged. You, you never chose that. You wouldn't have chosen it. You wouldn't <laughs> it have chosen it. Was it. No, you, you, there was no way you would have chosen it. And we've forgotten no about that. No way you, you would know? have been like, okay, you know what, the rituals we are doing, you know, for our boys when they're becoming men and our girls, <laughs> that's all rubbish now. It's all evil. Mm -hmm. There's no way you could have said that. There's no way you would have said that, hey, my father has passed on, now he's evil now. Mm -hmm. There's no way. But it was a forceful thing. Yeah, because me, what I don't like is how they demonized um, African cultures, which is no wrong land. I, I'm sure we used to be psychedelic gods. <laughs> you know, 100%. It's wrong land. Yeah, but, 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 you know, when you look at the other races, they have their own things that they do. You know, a certain queen died that side, and at the funeral they were doing like they things. There was a gold there. there yeah, it was that did not we make sense. The live on TV. Live on <laughs> TV. Yeah, you yeah, understand. Yeah. But they made you disown your entire lineage. Would no, Lento Lena is wrong. This is correct, and this entire thing has now created this internal battle amongst black people, especially in Africa, where it's like no, when what you believe in is wrong. So when. When you are going to create a cult, right, you have to isolate your victim from where he belongs, where he or she belongs. You have yeah. to remove them from what they were schooled and what they believe in first, in order for you to have full control of them. So for them to follow your narrative, it's exactly what happened through the colonization process. If you are colonized by the Arabic Muslims, your country becomes Arabic Muslim. Colonized by Christians like us, we are Christians. Yeah. Because when you look at Africa, Africa is divided. There's countries that believe in Muslims, countries that yeah, believe in Christianity. Africa, most of them, they're Muslims. Yeah. Tanzania, Uganda, yes. Nigeria, Ghana. Yeah. I need to tell this picture of Cecil Rhodes. Cecil Rhodes. I just came here. 
<laughs> well, he spoke about, um, I, I don't know, you said things like uh, in psychedelic parties or events where people uh, yeah. meet up and... Yeah, and it, was, it does. You, yeah, like you do host a couple of events, right? Yeah, I do retreats. Uh, yeah, but not us about that. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, like... <laughs> <laughs> Someone being a dragon. Uh, it's called, it's called uh, a retreat. It's called 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 a because of because um, I treat it as a program. You can't come to my event without preparation. There's no way. You're going to die in those mountains. We have to take you through a preparation method. We have to first give you some medicine that you're going to take. Like you mentioned microdose. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that you're going to take. We have to cleanse you. Right. We need to We need to start. There's certain diets that you need to eat. Things you need to avoid. So no weed. Weed is a blocker. Oh, yeah? Right? What do you mean? Every plant is a spirit. Okay. You know, like the coca leaves, cocaine, it has its own spirit, and you can see what it does. Mm. Opium, that plant, you can see the wunga heroin. Yeah, the right? poppy so plant. Weed has a so I say, when I choose to take that journey, it's goodbye me. Yeah, goodbye for those couple of weeks. Or just, or yeah. Or just, or just, okay, Wait, you prep for a couple of weeks before you before join you, the program? You don't just jump in and like. Yeah, when I come to your retreat, I was about, but no, that's not how it happens. <laughs> that's not how it happens. So you have to get ready. You have to mm-hmm. prepare. You have to be in the right space. And when one of you have to get ready. You have to prepare. You have to be in the right space. And one of the reasons for that is because of the intensity of the medicine, right? I do like the intense events, so I don't do like that. Let's sort of try this type of thing. Mm. So I do the intense events. So we need to prepare you for the intensity to such an extent that sometimes. Sometimes I'll have a very soft thing before the actual main retreat. A very soft, like, type of um, experience, ceremony, before the main, sometimes. But there's always, like, a preparation part. And then within the ceremony, then we go and we're traveling for, like, 12, 14 hours, depending on what type of medicine. Then we do the cleansing again, then post the retreat. We carry on with the microdosing. We carry on with the Zoom sessions. We need to have one-on-ones. Because you can come out of ceremony and you can make very harsh decisions that will hurt you, mm. right? And let, let me make an example, yeah. right? There's a lady, she's a child psychologist, always wants to call to help kids, uh, young girls and stuff, right? And she's like, helping these young girls who are raped, who have done this, who are abandoned and all of that. And she's married to a cop. This cop is overprotective. This guy is hyper paranoid of her and her safety. It's always checking up on her. Have you arrived at the place? Did you, no, 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 no. Send me the location. Let me take a, take a picture of the... All the time. Lady goes into the program, right? Yeah. Lady learns that she, has, she can't remember her memory before seven years old. During the program, she learns that at seven, five to seven years old, she was being maybe molested and abandoned. Yeah. She then, within the psychedelic journey, heals that wound by becoming her molester and understanding his history, finding closure of the, of the perpetrator, and also by becoming herself and also viewing herself. So she finds closure on the whole thing. She comes out of ceremony, right? She's like, I've always loved music. This child psychology thing is draining me because she went into child psychology because she's trying to heal a wound inside herself. So she had a trauma point with that. Then she looks at her husband. She's like, hey, well, I don't, I can't, I can't even relate to this man because this man is overprotecting and controlling. But that man was controlling and protecting the wounded child, mm. which is what she really wanted as a kid. Now she comes out of ceremony. She wants to make crazy decisions, right? So I want to change locations and careers. My whole life is misplaced. But if we were in the old space, like in the past, right? Indigenous type culture. We would have enough time with the medicine that the medicine will help her integrate this old self with the new self. It will help her marry the world. But because we, we can't be in the mountains forever, we can't keep doing like the medicine. Plus the medicine is expensive and all of those things. So 
that's what integration is post the ceremony. We actually have these one-on-one -on -one talks and we integrate and talk about it. What did you learn? What was that? And and we, we, we get all the lessons as much as we can from the ceremony and integrate them into this new life, right? Which is integrated with the past and the, and the now, the new present. So that's the entire program, right? In short. It sounds beautiful, man. It sounds like so much was taken from us. Oh, man, too mm. much. Because this sounds amazing, though. Too much is taken it's, for us. It, Imagine this was free. But then. Yeah, like, <laughs> we, knew, we knew what like, to, to know we can do this. Yeah. Mkulwami can do this. Yeah, yeah. You, you like, your, 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 your uncle or something would come to your place and mm. be like, hey, this child, he seems so disconnected. So they switched to... that whole thing into therapy. Like, is it the new age therapy type of thing? <sighs> Psychedelic assisted therapy or... Yeah, that one. Oh, psychedelic assisted therapy. That's the one where they're having this harm reduction thing that I talked about earlier. But um, they're trying to integrate because they're seeing the power of psychedelics into the therapy model slowly and slowly by microdosing, by isolating the, the, the DMT from the ayahuasca mm. plant and then making it like some sort of pharmacopoeia, like a, a, what's this, like something you can inject it on you and... They're trying to do all those things to, to now bring the knowledge of the past, the indigenous knowledge, into the into the lab, <laughs> right? So that's what they're trying to do. And it, it's new, you know. Um, when you look at, like, psychology and when it started, it's actually quite a new thing versus yeah. the plants, which we've been using for thousands of years. Yeah. It's actually quite new. Like, it's maybe 250 years you old. You know, we... I think we don't have much time, but I wanted to talk about something very, very interesting because I know you know a lot. What do you know about astral projection, my guy? People flying in the space at night. <laughs> Is that the one? The people are flying now and influencing other people. Tell us about that, my G. Oh, man. There was a project by the CIA called Subjective Communication. Mm -hmm. So what they discovered is that um, back then is that you can actually change someone's DNA from a from a distance or you can you can influence their behavior through their dreams from a distance right because right. there were people who were doing that right so they got gathered all these people who said they can do that and they were trying to now manipulate and trying to see what Russia is designing and China and Japan is designing as the next weapon mm. using those people who are now called astral projectors, right? Mm. You can call it astral projection. So that's basically uh, what it is. It's, it's really, you know, I, I want to say this, right? Since is it connected we, to when you're dreaming? Yeah, it is. It is sort of connected to when you're dreaming where you can actually go somewhere mm. and go into someone's consciousness and mm. all of those things. But... I want to say this. I want to say you are the highest concentration of spirits in this dimension. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that is powerful as you. You are the universe. In this dimension, you the God in mm -hmm. this dimension. The rest of the stuff, the entities, right? Your degoloshes, right? The ghosts, uh, the astral projectors, the people who are bewitching you through plants. That's nothing compared to you. So I think most people have got the pyramid upside down. Mm. You, are, you are actually at the top. You're not at the bottom. Mm. In this dimension, you actually rule. So whatever energy that you're like, ah, oh, man, oh, this thing is going to harm. People always ask me, don't you get, like, uh, people's energies coming on you, da, da, da. And I'm like, no, my initiation taught me that I'm actually at the top of my pyramid. Mm. So if I allow it to sort of um, influence me in whatever way, mm. then it will influence me and, to, and probably destroy me and distract me. But the thing is, the shadow, the darkness, is just an illusion. Yeah. It's a delusion. It's here to, to take you away from your innocence and your authenticity. And that's the game you are here to play, by the way. Mm. Life is a game. You are here to play that game. The one where you're deluded and buy into this thing and that and that. So experience yourself in a, in a different way. I mean, I've lived these days, dog. Life is a game, Nagi. I just control it with my thoughts, man. <laughs> But your thoughts become things. Careful there. The six million Jews died. <laughs> it wasn't their thoughts that were a problem. You know? <laughs> Nine million Congolese and but died. He, and and <laughs> but the feeling is the secret. Yeah, the vibration, man. Young Ton. I promise you, you can, you can change your life and be like, I'm going to go to Japan mm. or Cambodia or any other place, right? Mm. Or Lima. 
and be like, I'm going to be someone different. I'm going to another country. Man, I but you'll find yourself waiting there. Just I'm, waiting. I manifested this dope episode. Yeah. And it's happening. Yeah. I feel you manifested it. Yeah. From, from these retreats that you, you have or these programs that you have, is there like a, a, a certain, um, 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 cause we don't have a lot of time anymore. Is there like, um, a certain price range that you have, um, when you do these things or, 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 or Ganjan, can you please share that with the viewers in terms of like, before you how, get to that question, is that how you make money uh, when in the system? I do. I, yeah, I live, I, I, this what I do for you. Okay. Uh, I'm not like, I'm not like, devil. That's, That's why, why I don't do, do soft, soft therapies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to work. Okay. In the morning, in corporate. So, so yeah, yeah. No, you can. Uh, and and how do people get a hold of you? So it's psychedelic medicine underscore sa on Instagram, and then it's psychedelic medicine dot co dot za on uh, on thing on the website. And uh, the average program, which is like three to three to six weeks, is like six six point nine. That's the average program, right? I don't know, man. I think, but next year we need to increase our prices. I mean, if I'm saving you, um, I'm saving you 10 years of therapy, right? So that's mm. a lot. And it's a lot of work on my side too. You know, the medicine, you have to source it around the world. Mm. In the Gabon, you know, Congo, Gabon area, mm. Peru, you know, South America. You source it all over the world, Egypt. And, mm. and you source some here locally as well. But uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It really needs you when you're ready. You can't just jump in and be like, I'm going to do it. No, you can't. Mm. It actually calls you. You know, I've had people say, yeah, I dreamt of you. I'm like, oh, yeah. Huh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, it's not a fun activity. It's ah, no, something yeah, serious. I mean, like, it's a word. I know I'm ready, ready for you, dog. I can feel it. I've been ready. Then shot to ban, but when you're ready, the teacher will, you know, uh, up here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> when you're really ready, the teacher disappears. <laughs> all right, all right, Doc. Um, anything else that you want to educate our viewers before Sivad? Um, the most important things that we should know about psychedelics or anything about the world, anything to enlighten us. For me, it's it's this thing of treating your mental health as if it's something that you're gonna achieve when you're a child who goes through a chaotic childhood you you can easily fall into the fantasy thing where you're like i want to go into a place where there's perfection so what i want to take away is that okay your takeaway from this is that you'll never be healed healing is not an achievement it's not something you buy right healing is a relationship with yourself so you, when you start, you have an abusive relationship with yourself because your ancestral lineage as well had an abusive relationship with self. And as you go deeper, then you have a good relationship with self. And you start enjoying that relationship. Then you miss yourself. Then you can do your two hours of meditation and all of that. But it's just a relationship. That's what it is, of unconditional love. And it's not like you're going to get there and say, Hey, Luas, I'm tired of meditating. When am I getting healed? I'm like, that's, you're focusing on the wrong thing. You must look at the relationship with self. That's what it is. Beautiful, man. I say heal is sluggish. One time. One, the one world, time. Man. One Thank time. you so much, Lozzy, man, for coming through and educating us about psychedelics. You, it's been stay. amazing. I think I'm going to watch this episode over and over again until I understand some of the things that you were yeah. touching on. Because yeah. I feel like, hey, we're going to get that deeper, man. Hey, I'm going to get that deeper, man. Hey, I'm going to get that deeper, man. Hey, I'm going to yeah, I was like, hey, this guy, <laughs> do you really want to go there? <laughs> Those are behind the scenes things that people don't know. They don't ah, need to know. <laughs> but shout out, guys, man. Peace to the gods. Peace to the goddesses. Highest frequency. Sluggish. We're out here.